Greece went through a rough patch around 10 years ago when they struggled with debt. But good news, the Greek economy is getting better, like getting a raise and finally catching up on those bills. Stay tuned as we delve into the details of the transition. Greece started off well financially when it joined the European Union in 1981. Its debt was low and its budget was balanced. However, the government spent a lot of money over the years, and things got worse when the global economy slowed down. By 2001, Greece joined the group of European countries using the euro, but this also made it harder to fix its own financial problems. Things took a sharp turn for the worse over the next 20 years. The government spent way too much money on things they didn't really need, kind of like buying fancy toys when you're already in debt. This caused their spending to be much higher than what they were bringing in, like spending more than you earn. This led to a huge pile of debt and financial problems. Two main political groups in Greece, PASOK and New Democracy, kept trading power for 30 years. They both tried to win votes by giving lots of free stuff to people like healthcare and other benefits. This made the economy big and expensive, but not very good at producing things or selling them to other countries. It's like having a giant house with too much furniture, but not enough money to buy groceries. The good times in Greece weren't free. All that free stuff and spending led to the country going deeper and deeper into debt. This was even worse because Greece had already agreed to certain limits on spending when it joined the Eurozone. Basically, they were spending more than they should have been, even before they joined the Euro. For example, their debt was already way too high, and they were spending more money than they were bringing in. This was a recipe for trouble. Imagine everyone was worried about big debts after the 2008 financial crisis. Countries like Portugal, Ireland, Italy, Greece, and Spain, which are nicknamed pigs, had borrowed a lot of money. Investors, worried they might not get their money back, started charging them more interest like a higher fee for lending money. This made it even harder for these countries to pay back their debts. Imagine PIIGS like a group of friends who borrowed a lot of money. Before the 2008 crisis, richer countries like Germany kind of hid this fact from everyone else. But after the crisis, people started realizing PIIGS owed a lot and got worried. This made borrowing even more expensive for PIIGS, like having high interest rates on credit cards. To make matters worse, PIIGS economies shrunk after the crisis, making their debt seem even bigger. Think of it like your debt growing as your income shrinks. This pushed Greece's debt to a whopping 180% of its economy in 2011. A very bad sign. Imagine things were already bad for Greece. Then in 2009, a new leader revealed the country's debt was way bigger than everyone thought, like almost triple what they said before. This was the final blow, making the debt crisis even worse. It's like finding out you owe way more money on your credit card than you realized. Greece had a massive debt problem in the 2010s. While the economy has gotten a little better, it's still not fully recovered, partly because of the COVID pandemic. Although Greece got help from other countries in 2018, they still have a long way to go to pay back all that debt. They won't be done until 2060, in a nutshell. Greeks borrowed a lot of money, then things got bad and they couldn't pay it back. They got some help, but it's going to take them a long time to catch up. Greece's debt to GDP ratio is a measure of how much debt the country has compared to the size of its economy. In 2020, it reached a record high of 206.3%, which means that Greece's debt was more than twice the size of its economy. While it has slightly decreased to 197.3% in 2021, it is still one of the highest debt to GDP ratios in the world. Despite this high debt burden, Greece is considered a developed country according to the World Bank. This means that it has a high standard of living and a well-developed economy. Greece's ranking of 32nd on the Human Development Index and its GDP per capita of around $23,000 are both indicators of this. Here's an analogy to help understand the debt to GDP ratio Imagine you have a credit card debt of $20,000 and your annual income is $10,000. Your debt to income ratio would be two, which is quite high. This means it would take you a long time to pay off your debt. Similarly, a high debt to GDP ratio indicates that a country has a lot of debt relative to its ability to pay it off. While Greece's debt situation is concerning, it's important to remember 
that the country is still considered developed with a good standard of living. However, a high debt to GDP ratio does pose challenges for the future and requires careful management. Here actions Greece took to reduce tax evasion. Greece tried to get information from Swiss banks about Greek citizens' accounts to catch tax evaders hiding money there. Greece pushed people to use credit and debit cards instead of cash, making it harder for businesses to avoid recording sales and paying taxes. By law, many businesses had to install machines to accept card payments, further reducing opportunities for tax evasion. People who paid electronically got tax benefits, making it more attractive than cash. Greece made it easier for people to file taxes electronically, reducing paperwork and making it harder to cheat. Greece conducted more audits on businesses and individuals to catch tax evaders. Greece worked with other countries to exchange information about potential tax evaders. Greece launched campaigns to educate people about the importance of paying taxes and the consequences of tax evasion. So what is the current status of Greece right now? Well, how is it walking on the path of economic recovery, where Greece is enjoying a post-pandemic economic boom? Reports suggest that they have grown faster than Europe, unemployment is at a record low, and inflation has plummeted. However, there's a catch as housing prices are skyrocketing, especially in Athens. To tackle this, the government raised the minimum investment for residency permits. While things are good, there are concerns. Greece's population is shrinking and aging, and investments are lower compared to other European countries. The economy is still smaller than before the 2008 crisis and slightly behind the rest of Europe. What is the good news? Greece is finally running a budget surplus, meaning they're collecting more money than they spend. This allows them to pay off debt faster, improving their long-term financial health. So, while there are challenges, Greece's economic future looks brighter than it has in a long time. The Greek Prime Minister just won re-election and has a plan to pay down the country's huge debt, which is by selling government assets. While the debt has shrunk, it's still the highest in Europe. To help, they're selling shares in banks rescued during a crisis. Investors are happy with these efforts, making it cheaper for Greece to borrow money than ever before. After the devastation of World War II, it experienced a period of rapid growth known as the Greek miracle. This was followed by another boom from 2000 to 2008, exceeding even the EU's growth rate. Unfortunately, the 2008 global financial crisis dealt a severe blow, leading to a deep recession. Through restructuring debt and implementing austerity measures, Greece slowly began its recovery. Interestingly, The Economist ranked Greece as the world's top economic performer in 2022 and 2023, highlighting its impressive rebound. If you enjoyed watching our informative video, click on like and subscribe.